Hello everyone, and welcome to Minecraft Hardcore. We have a predicament today, but first, some happy news. I asked you all to name these cats, and you certainly did. There were so many good ideas, which I'm sure I'll get to use because there's so many cats around here. But these kitties are named Romeo and Juliet. Isn't that just the cutest? When I saw that name, it just made me smile, and that's such a good name suggestion. Thank you so much. Romeo and Juliet, you are gorgeous. Now, on to the more unfortunate news. Today, the next step for us to do to get more prepared is obviously go underground and we need diamonds. But that's usually how people die in hardcore. Like if you're gonna die, it's, it's a creeper. It's gonna one-shot you right at the start. I realize there's a 50% chance of getting diamonds from a buried treasure. Now this is big because we already have one diamond and we already have obsidian, which means we can get enchanting without ever going underground, assuming we get lucky enough, right? Like we, we can make that work. So because there's a 50% chance and we've already looted one buried treasure that had nothing in it, we should only have to loot like one or two more to find that extra diamond that we need. So we're gonna start off today by heading out to another sunken ship. I don't know if this is smart or just really, really wimpy, but it's a hardcore world and I feel like I can't really be shamed for playing wimpy, right? Like I, I would like to keep the world, so I feel like using my brain to do everything other than die is somewhat commendable. If you're watching this series to see someone take a million risks and see if they can live, this is not the one. It's just, I'm not that person. I'm so sorry. I have discovered our first shipwreck that we have not yet been in, so let's hope that there's a buried treasure in there. All right, in we go. Oh. This is easy. Ah, there we go. Okay, we got a buried treasure map. That is exactly what we needed, but let's continue on just in case there's more. Popping through here. Okay, leather tunic, some suspicious stew. Nothing that notable, but I'll take it. All right, now all I have to do is figure out this map. So we need to go east, pretty much just east. So east is literally straight this way. Let's do it. Gosh, I've never in my life seen this much coral. Like, if any of you have tried this seed, have you ever seen this much coral? Because I just can't, <laughs> can't get over it. It's so much. Aha, it looks like it's going to be this island right up here. Perfect. Unfortunately for me, this X is in the water. Right about here. Oh dear, it's deep. Okay, I got this. Not going to lie, I'm struggling quite a lot to find this one. <gasps> I found it, I found it. <gasps> And it has a diamond. Yes, the 50% rule worked perfectly in my favor. All right, that's just pretty much all that I needed. That's actually amazing. Wow. It would be real, I had to dig a lot to find this one. I've just, wasn't on my A game today. Not a pirate, not feeling it. Did successfully get the loot though, so it doesn't matter. All right, now it's time to head back in over this coral reef and find my way home. I think the best thing about all of this coral is there's so many sea pickles, so things are really bright, and I haven't really been seeing any drowned. Normally going out like this in hardcore, I'd have to be so worried about drowned with tridents, but not really seeing anybody around here. It's actually oddly peaceful. I am home now, and we can officially do some crafting. So I already have a book ready and made, and I am aware that I'm not going to be able to perfectly do this. Like I obviously cannot right now at this moment get an entire full enchanting setup, but I can still make good use of what I have and get some good level one enchantments. So let's go ahead and craft our very first enchanting table. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> I love it. Now, obviously, I don't really need a whole spot for an enchanting table right now, so I'm gonna just lay it down here and let's take off my armor. I'm gonna leave the boots because they have a good enchantment on them. And put this in projectile protection. Should I get that? Oh, protection one. I think protection might be a better general enchant, so I'm gonna go with that. Perfect, we got the advancements. We're gonna go protection one again and protection one again. Perfect. We officially have enchanted iron armor. I know this is not crazy or anything like that, but it's a heck of a lot better than nothing. Now that we have this, I feel much better about our future down in the mines, so I suppose that's what we should do next. All right, kitties, wish me luck. It's time to go mining. Oh my gosh, I think I'm mentally prepared for this. I just have to remember to use my shield. I'm really bad at using my shield. We're gonna go down, by the way, kind of straight down to diamond level, because to be honest, I pretty much have a lot of iron at the moment. So I really just need, oh, do I have my bucket? I do. 
I really just need to go down to where the diamonds are and hope that I can get those. There is a cave right here, and this is at Y39. So this might be an okay place to start. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna at least get a look at the cave so that I can at least get safe. I would love to not spend too much time in caves if I don't absolutely have to because it is really risky. These are the parts that you need to watch out for because they're they're dark and it'll fall on your head and it's just a bad time all around. All right, so far though, this is pretty doable to be honest. This is fine, cool. There's a creeper. Sorry, bat. <laughs> Perfect, and some gold. Let's just make sure that nothing is, yep, okay, cool, cool. Let's grab the gold. One piece, rude. All right, it's fine. This cave is going upwards, which is not exactly what I want. And yeah, it ends right here. So that's perfect. That just means that I can continue mining straight downwards right after I get this iron though. So, just to make this make sense, I am going to just fill in the wall so that nothing can fall on me in my mines. Just like so, and then we'll continue down. I'm kind of enjoying this method of mining, to be honest. It's nicer than making a staircase, and eventually we'll be able to have elevators up and down into our mines. Plus, we're getting so much cobble. So here's what I have for a mine so far. Basically, we'll drop down to this area over here. Obviously, I'll have to have a pillar of some form right here to have the ladder on. We can have different layers above it if we'd like them, maybe access to the cave to stop off. And then we'll have these kind of four areas in here and I'll probably put some barrels right here or furnaces or just some type of system for me to kind of work down here. I think that'll kind of be great for me. Now the main job is to just keep digging. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm gonna push to find diamonds in this episode. It's something that I need to work towards, but I'm not gonna force myself to strip mine for hours and hours and hours if it's just not happening in one particular day. I do, however, really enjoy doing this because I get some cobblestone, which I'm going to need in order to protect my villagers, which I should be keeping an eye on the sun because we're so close to the village down here, I'm afraid that the zombies are gonna come and convert my villagers while I'm down here in the mines, which I don't want that to happen. Returning from my first successful mining trip, now to come back up to the village and do a little bit of work. I find breaking up mining can be helpful. I mean, caving is pretty exciting, but strip mining like that with an iron pickaxe with no efficiency on it, a little less exciting, not gonna lie. So it's time for a break. For our first trip down though, we did collect a fair amount of stuff. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but look at all this cobble. While I'm on this break, I'm gonna take some time to chop down some wood and see if I can't start getting the village kind of protected. I think it's about that time. I mean, every time night comes, I have to like faithfully sleep to make sure that no zombies get at these villagers because well, I've not really protected them. I've not barred them in houses or done anything like that, so. I think we kind of need to make them at least a little bit safe. And now that we've done some mining, we have some cobbles so that we can kind of get started on that. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to try to connect this entire village perimeter together with a wall. And I think I'm gonna start with a very basic wall kind of coming out from this one that I have here. We're gonna do it one block tall to start, which I know is not an actual wall, but it's just in order for me to kind of map out the shape of it and not actually any of the details of it. So literally just gonna mark out exactly the path that I want this wall to take. We'll do a little diagonal moment over here just to show off. And then I think we can go straight this way. So one of the main things that I wanna do here is actually something that I've never done before. I want to kind of upgrade this village over time. So, oh dear. Oh my gosh. Um, um I should maybe cover this hole. The villagers are gonna die here, <laughs> what the heck? Okay, uh, but anyways, on to what I was talking about. I, I've never stayed in an area before and actually given it upgrades. Like, in the survival world that I have at the moment, I've pretty much stuck to the build that I have and kept it pretty much as it was when I started, as opposed to upgrading it. But what if in this series, I slowly upgraded this into like a proper, like hardcore survival base that nothing can ever get into and we're completely safe in. I think that'd be kind of fun. 
For now though, it's hard to think too far into the future because we're not even very well protected and at any moment I could literally just die. So <laughs> let's work on that. I am gonna go around this farm down here. I'm gonna have it so that the villager can get to it maybe eventually, but I just, I'd like to have it not be a giant square. I, I kind of want my buildings to have some shape or my castle wall area thing to have some shape. This is perfect. I feel like I've got the perfect shaped village here for this sort of thing. This didn't even take that much cobble and I'm already back to Dandelion Hill here. You know, I could probably go around Dandelion Hill, but yeah, there we go. Hang on, let me get a better view of what's going on. There we go. So this is my domain, my village, my castle, eventually. That's the wall. I, I think that works. It encases every house without the houses being changed yet. Eventually, I will transform this place, but for now, this is pretty cool. We have some farms on the outside that we can decorate up, and it'll be safe for us to go on the outskirts of the wall, but this is basically the first layer of wall to just keep the villagers in. We can, we can do more later if we survive that long, but yeah, this is great. So now comes the next part of this adventure, which involves actually building the wall and making it functional. And now, while today I don't think the wall is going to get very big, I do think we should at the very least get some fence or maybe some actual wall blocks out of this cobble just to make it at the very least functional. And we also need to make sure that the inside is lit up. While I'm in the area, oh, hello tree. I think it's a good idea for me to probably just pop my head down here before I cover this up and just see what baddies could possibly spawn. Um, I'm scared. Oh, there's lots of iron though, and coal. Ah! <laughs> I've never seen that many creepers in one place. Bro, this is hardcore. We can't be doing this. <laughs> no. No. No, I'm all right. I'm okay, actually. No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. This was a good chat. I'm really glad we did this. Yep. I'm returning to the surface. Okay. I actually just think that it would be better for everyone involved if we forgot that this existed for a while. Um, you know, the foreseeable future. Just, it's not here. That's... Nope. No, thank you. I'm okay. Now, in order to keep this villager down here on the inside for now, I am just gonna, I'm gonna move your composter. I'm so sorry. I know you're gonna have to share a farm for a little bit, but it, don't worry, I'm putting it back. It's just, it's gonna be in here. There, there we go. It's, it's in there. You can, Oh. <laughs> okay, you have your little crisis. It's okay. Um, I'm gonna build a wall. Also, I'm not sure how iron golem birth works, but we have three iron golems now. Hello, fellas. Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't plan on messing with them. They hang around the city center. They're great, to be honest. Love it. So, we're gonna plan this to be a gate at some point. This will, it'll be a gate. I, I don't know how yet, but it will. And so basically what I'm gonna do is just the exact same thing that I did to my own base. Just a really basic wall. Just all along here, super simple, nothing crazy, but it should do the trick. And then we just run along with fences. Obviously speaking, I will upgrade this. I'm aware that it's not the best design in the world, but it gets the job done for today, okay? It's only episode three. I don't even have diamonds yet. I ain't got time to be building a massive wall. It's gotta be functional over beauty. I've never heard myself say that before, but there's always a time for something new. It's fine. Isn't that just the most perfect wall? It's perfect. Does the job. Very awesome. I approve. I like it. Nitwit, I'm gonna need you to get inside the castle, please. Although I really am not gonna care if you decide not to, to be honest. Iron Golem, get off my wall. I was just complimenting you. Don't start with me, okay? Don't test me. I'm building a wall. It's very intense. All right, so far so good. The only problem area at the moment is this one where it kind of tucks down, but to be honest, I think I'm just gonna break my own rule and kind of start filling this almost completely in with cobblestone. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but we're gonna see. We'll find out the hard way, it's fine. Well, if I do say so myself, this has been a very successful wall building project. It's not completely safe, but it's better than it was, so it's time to light it up. 
Fortunately for me though, I don't have very much coal, so it's back in the mines. You'll get used to me being super distracted if you're new here. Don't worry, it's fine. Anyways, back on track. The easiest way for me to get coal is just to be down in these surface level caves and see if I can't just get some really basic stuff right off the bat here, as I tend to avoid coal for some reason. I'm never one of those people who has the patience to mine out a whole vein of coal. I just, I wish I was, but I'm not. Luckily for me though, we do have lots of caves down here that, yep, we haven't explored. Good, nice. Love creepers, they really just make me so happy. Okay, this is a pretty big cave system actually. <laughs> I'm really impressed with this. So what I do when I'm going through caves to make myself the most amount of safe is just run through them really quickly, make sure that everything is lit up and there's no surprise areas like this area right here. And then I'll go back through and grab the iron and coal that I see. And I won't do that until I know that it's fairly safe and nothing can get to me while I'm mining. I'm just mentioning that because sometimes I get comments like, ah, you missed the iron, you missed all the iron, but it really, it was just a clip of me like kind of running through the cave, speed running it so that I could light it up. Ah, this is so easy. We are already at 38 coal. Honestly, such a nice resource to get. I can't wait until we have fortune though. It'll be so much better to come and get it. I almost want to wait to get ores like this until we have fortune because I just know that we're going to be able to like double or triple our supply, but... Regardless, we're not there yet, so I need some coal in this moment. All right, and just like that, a full stack of coal. That was surprisingly painless. Now, all I have to do is make a whole bunch of torches. Heck yeah. <laughs> and I don't think I'm gonna do this with any amount of logic. I'm literally just gonna spam torches on this whole area and hope that I don't miss a spot. You know what, I'll probably let it go night for like a second just to see if I miss a spot. That could be a good tactic. Gosh, I haven't kept a village safe in survival mode in so long. Normally I'm like, ah, whatever, you guys can fend for yourselves, but I feel like it's important here because they can give me some really good stuff. Like enchanted books, mending early on, amazing emerald trades, like there's so much power here. All right, to be honest, I think that's enough torches. <laughs> I think I've, I've really gone a bit overboard here, but that's okay, you know what? We need a lot, and I'll do a couple on the outside as well, just to be extra safe. All right, with that taken care of, I'm gonna do a little bit of terraforming out here and just get rid of this dirt. It's driving me nuts that it's not super flat, and I'm gonna make it a little bit flat so that we can actually work with the terrain out here. Now, while we're on the topic of villagers and villager trading, I think that we've missed out on an important opportunity here. We haven't really been taking proper advantage of it, and that, is farming. We have not been doing very much farming, have we? And it's really important to do a bunch of farming because it means that we can trade with all of these farmer villagers. So I have some pumpkins gathered here and they're definitely gonna be the easiest way because we can eventually, once we get redstone, make automatic farms. But it's also gonna be important just to generally expand everything we have so that we can take advantage of everything that's farmable. This sugarcane area, for example, is super tiny, but it's so effective. And I should probably get around to feeding my cows again so that we can get some leather for that enchanting setup. Speaking of the enchanting setup, Romeo and Juliet, I have a question, everyone. Um, is it better, do you think, if I wait to get diamonds until I have fortune? Because let's be honest, I could get fortune. Like, I can. There's nothing stopping me here. I could get fortune. I have paper, I have some leather. The only thing that I need to do is breed my cows a little bit more to get a bit more leather, and then I could have a full enchanting setup. I don't have a ton of lapis yet, but you know, there's a chance that I could get fortune here. Do I do it? Do I take that chance? Do I work towards enchanting before I work towards diamonds so that I can maximize the amount of diamonds that I get? I don't know. I've never really had this opportunity before, so I've never had to think about it. Hello, sheep. Would you like some as well? There you go. Hello, sir. Do you mind if I use your services for a moment? <laughs> I love that they're just climbing in and out of this window. This is a mistake in my base right here. So I need a window frame here, first of all, but also you can kind of get in and drop down from over here. So I just need to replace these slabs with dark oak fences and it would completely fix this issue. I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> I'm always sleeping through the night, so it hasn't been a concern, but it's really funny to me that the villagers use it. Right, so I have some leather on me. Let's just see 
how many books this can get me. So it can be 28 books, which is nine bookshelves. That's an incredible start. How many do we need for enchanting? Wait, let me Google it. Oh, Wandering Trader. Excuse me, sir. What do you have to sell? Nothing, to be honest. Nothing at all. Um, I really wish that they would buff your trades a little bit because it's it's a little sad, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, I googled it. You only need 15 bookshelves for full enchanting. So, you know what? We're gonna do it. We're gonna get full enchanting today. First things first though, I would really like to just go ahead and get a farm of some form going. So I'm gonna plant some pumpkins along here and then also some wheat. The villagers are farming wheat and they're doing a great job of it, but I just would like to have my own stash and I think eventually having automatic farms for all of this is definitely gonna be the move. I'm just not there yet. Chopping down some wood so that we can make some room. Oh, we're getting so many amazing supplies. This is probably the most prepared I've ever felt for a Minecraft Let's Play, to be honest. Like, we're getting enchanted. That's never happened to me before. That's insane. All right, now all I have to do is, whoop, chop down some wood. Ah. Oh. For goodness sake. <laughs> I'm just gonna make another crafting table to keep out here. You know what? Never, extra crafting tables never hurt anybody. All right, just clearing some grass so that I can hopefully get a whole bunch of seeds from this. All right, time to get planting some wheat. I love this farming phase of the game. Ah, to be honest, I could just sit in Minecraft and farm trees and cobble and slowly build up a base. Oh, hi chickens. Hi. Yeah, I could farm forever. Chickens, I do feel like we could use you, you know? This wasn't what I was planning, but maybe we could make a, a place for you um, to gather some eggs and things. One second, chickens. Oh gosh, my inventory. How did this happen to me? So for chickens, I'm not actually super interested in farming them for anything, but I think that it would be a good idea to get kind of a collection system set up for their eggs. I'm also fairly lazy though, and this is just a temporary thing. So I think for now, I'm literally just gonna plop them on that harper. Hopefully this will go fine. Okay, chickens, come here, come on. That's it, that's it. I'm just gonna hope that they kind of walk in. Uh, can you get in the hole? Please, sit on that hopper right there. Yeah, like that. You as well, perfect, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure doing business. <laughs> I'm not gonna breed these chickens a ton. We'll just get a little baby chicken there and that'll be three chickens producing eggs for us. Basically, all that'll happen here is they will lay an egg, it'll go into the hopper right here. And that's literally all I need. Eventually, I'll take those eggs and I'll do something with it. We'll be able to make cakes and things like that, but we'll also be able to make a bigger system for the chickens in general and hopefully have a proper coop area. Anyway, now that the chickens are out of the way, it's back to planting seeds. And sadly, cows, I do need leather from you, so you, you might have to do a vanishing act for me. So weird how that keeps happening. Chicken, did you hurt that cow? Weird. All right, cows, here you go. Here's some food. Everybody can have some. Yep, yep, yep. My gosh, is there a meeting that I didn't know about? <laughs> what is happening? Why are there so many beings in this one spot? I actually love it. We really need to get this central area built into something cool. I think one of the coolest things about villagers is just building them areas to have them work in and have them actually use it. Like it's so cool to make a build and have the things in the world actually use your build. That I don't know if that's just me, but I really like that about map making. This little piece of land right here outside of my area is driving me nuts that it kind of dips down like this so abruptly. So I'm honestly, I'm just gonna fill it in. Look at all the iron we got. It's all smelted. Oh, who just got hurt? Excuse me. I just heard a villager take damage and I, uh, I don't know how. <laughs> Sir, did you take damage? What is going on? Okay, it's fine, it's fine, everybody's fine. But yeah, we have, look at this, look at the iron. We haven't even really been caving. And we have so much iron, I'm so proud. And we have gold to trade with the piglins when we go to the nether, ah. Oh, life is good, you know what? Let's use this empty map and just, I just wanna see. Oh, <gasps> whoa! It actually does look really cool. It looks really busy, but you can see the wall going all the way around. 
Wait, I love it. I want to put it in an item frame. Am I going to waste a piece of leather to put this in an item frame? Absolutely. Absolutely, I am. And I think we can just kind of put it maybe on the table here. Or maybe we should put it on the wall. Maybe right here? <laughs> That's kind of cute. Now we can see all of our progress. Aw, I love it. Well, to be honest, for the next like hour of my life, I'm just gonna be basically farming wheat, farming sugarcane, and feeding up these cows. So I don't think there's much more for me to show all of you in this episode, and it's running pretty long anyways. I'm sorry that this episode has been a little bit more scatterbrained. You can yell at me in the comments if this is not the type of thing that you like, but this is pretty much genuinely how I play and enjoy the game. If I'm doing one thing, I can quickly move to another and just generally just do whatever feels right in the moment. I was planning on doing a better caving expedition, definitely, but I don't know, it didn't really work out like that, and I feel like we're playing it very safe, which can be considered boring, but also if this is gonna be a long-term series, Playing it safe in the early game when we're really vulnerable is a good idea. Let me know what you think of everything going on in this world. I can't wait to hear from you. I'm really enjoying building up this base. I hope that you're enjoying it too. Thank you so much for all the support on the series, and I hope I'll see you in the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. After all, the seed is subscribe to Gemini Day. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone.